Hey, this is Paul from ESG, and today we're joined by Carson Brown, co-founder and head of product at Tor. Thank you so much for being with us today. Real pleasure to be here, thank you. In case you've managed to miss it, Tor are the folks behind this scooter right here and possibly the best scooter launch video ever made. 2020 has been a slow moving year for all but one guy. So let's get right to the star of the show. Does the scooter have a model name? No, it Tor. It's just Tor at the moment. So it's like yeah. Sting, Madonna, Tor. Right, yeah, I wouldn't it. put us in the same bracket as Madonna, but just Tor. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Tor looks like absolutely no other scooter I've ever seen. Can you take us through some of the design decisions that made it look the way it does? Yeah, I guess um, the first thing you probably notice compared to a traditional scooter is like the lack of a, of a long deck. Mm -hmm. um, we've got. Uh, foot platforms which allow you to place your feet side by side. The, the bigger scooters end up going wider and wider and wider in deck so that you have a you know, really big stance. We felt like you don't actually have to do that. Uh, you, you can actually retain like, quite a, a slender frame and allow your feet to have a very wide stance and it changes how you maneuver the product. So that's probably the first order thing that, that you'd notice on this compared to a lot of scooters. The wheels. The big 12 and a half inch wheels. <laughs> yeah, the, the elephant in the room. Looking at it, it seems like You've done a kind of a magic trick here. You've got big wheels on a scooter that's not that long, and that brings us back to the foot platforms, I think. Yeah, yeah, so we, we've moved out instead of moving along. It, it is a bit of an illusion. I think it's something that people notice in person a lot more. They, mm -hmm. they look at the product and think, oh, this isn't really big. No, yeah. it, it isn't actually. It's in line with most much smaller scooters in terms of length. So I thought it'd be fun to put uh, a couple scooters side by side, the well-known uh, Segway 9Bot Max and Tor right here, and Part of the reason is, is, is it's hard to tell on camera what the real dimensions of a scooter are. And you can just really see like the 12 and a half inch tires versus the, the 10 inch uh, on the 9Bot Max. Uh, it's, a, it's a big difference. Neither of these have suspension, but on Tour, you don't need it because you've got just like a bicycle, they've got big air filled tires. Tor has big air filled tires, and so you just don't really need suspension. And I felt that when I was out riding. If you can get yourself a good tire with enough air in it, and, and, it, and you get your diameter large enough, the, the need kind of goes away. So mm -hmm. you can get like all of these added benefits of having a really good direct connection mm -hmm. as you move around uh, on the street, but also really, really good grip. You know, mm -hmm. don't have all those changes. So, so you can tell in person more than anything, actually how substantial the wheels are when you when you compare it. When it, when mm -hmm. you see a tour on its own, you kind of think, oh, those are quite big, but actually like, yeah. 10 inches are kind of new in this kind of size of scooter. Mm -hmm. That's not where we started. We were down at six and then eight and now 10 and yeah. even still, too small. And there's a, kind of an oversimplification that happens it's kind of like with name brand batteries, some people are like, oh, name brand good, not name brand is, is automatically bad. And same thing happens with suspension, suspension good, not suspension bad, and it's not the case at all. It, it's really, really tricky to get suspension perfect mm -hmm. on a vehicle where the rider weighs multiples of the vehicle. And it also reduces the weight of the scooter to not have suspension. Yeah, and, then, and that matters as soon as you got a stairs to go up and you, know, you fold it up, take it in your house every day. It's, it's, it's really quite a compromise once you go down that route. And so this is actually quite a wide tire. In bikes, there's been a real shift in, in commuter bikes towards hybrid big meteor tires because they ride incredibly. Mm -hmm. none, of those, none of those bikes have suspension. Um, so actually getting that amount of volume of air in the mm -hmm. tires is huge. One of the funny aspects is you can look at a you can look at a scooter deck, and some people will will ride um, with one foot behind the other, mm -hmm. or kind of uh, laterally. And you have to ask your question: Are you riding like that because that's the the area that you've been given? Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried? Have you ever had the area to try actually being slightly wider? And once you're given it, and and I reckon that you're pretty much double from, from mm -hmm. between these two. Completely changes how, how you <laughs> yeah. ride. Also something that I discovered, uh, I just did the range test uh, yesterday, just because you have two platforms that happen to be about the same shape and size as your feet, doesn't mean you have to keep your feet in exactly the same place. I was like, oh wow, there's actually a ton of flexibility here. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing hard braking, I can, I can you know, kind of hang my heels off a little bit. If I want to have a lot of front back control, I can actually shift one foot forward yeah. and one back and still get a ton of front and back control. People think, oh, well, I don't want to just keep my feet there. It's like, that's Fine. Yeah. It's fine. You, you you'll be riding and you realize that you can you can actually shift a bit. You yeah. can you can move yourself back and and you have that you still have that control. The other thing that is obviously really nice to see here is the overall length. And it, it mm -hmm. you know, depending on the angle it might be a bit difficult to see, but 
yes, we have bigger wheels and, and that comes with a load of advantages, but we didn't go and make this thing huge. Mm -hmm. you know, this is really lining up really well with, with, yeah. with what is not really a big scooter in the first place, in mm -hmm. all honesty. So we, we packaged this all and that's that's really down to the foot platforms. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So one of the other things that, that you'll notice is that it does actually fold down. It's a common question that we mm -hmm. get. Um, that's kind of the fold point around, around there. Mm -hmm. um, that allows you to have a lot more portability uh, than, than basically people would expect. I think there's a, a contrary opinion. It's like, oh, it does fold, right? It's like, of course it folds. I mean, that's that's part of what makes an electric scooter an electric scooter. And a lot of that's helped by the fact the foot platforms are wider, is that you don't have this really long thing that you, you know, you're struggling to lift up or you can't maneuver through hallways. It's it's actually quite short. Yeah, one of the other aspects, or lastly, is the lighting. So we've got a wraparound front light uh, that's around 300 lumens and a, a brake light that's 100. And then lastly for the kicker, a projection light, which projects onto the rider's back as you're riding to help road users like predominantly cars and, and uh, other larger forms of transport to see you as you're maneuvering through traffic. And that's patented, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's an amazing feature. We see scooters, you know, a lot of them had low headlights and then they eventually evolved to have high headlights, but taillights are always, have always been stuck where they are. Having a light shining up your back, it just completely changes, I think, the visibility of the rider at night. Fundamentally, every scooter is has a limitation that you're gonna end up with lights just above the rear wheel or mm -hmm. just around the height of the rear wheel. We did see that as the end of kind of the limitation of more as like a challenge. It's like, how, how can we get light where we really want it? Mm -hmm. it, it matters, like that, that kind of safety aspect, um, that and you know, being an all white scooter means that you're riding at night on your way home from work, it's gonna matter, it's gonna help. Something else that's unusual about the scooter is that it's got a center stand and not a side stand. Uh, what was uh, the thinking behind that decision? Yeah, that was a that was probably a contentious one uh, within the team. We we talked about it quite a bit. Luckily, we have people in the team who have motorcycles, and I think that um, that sidedness kind of starts to bother you. Is that people may step off in a different direction, and being able to always put it onto the stand um, is really advantageous. And the other thing is is that when you take a product and you rest it up on a stand, it's nice for it to be square to a wall or something, mm. not where you like kind of put down the foot stand and then it leans over and you kind of don't really know where it's gonna end up. So mm -hmm. it's one of the features that we really like. You can kind of roll up and stamp your foot down and pull it back and that's, um, you're, and you're done, you just leave it and it's mm -hmm. stable. And it's also spring loaded, so it's kind of, you just, you lift it up a little bit and it just folds itself away. Yeah, we wanted to tuck in so that, you know, you can just ride off and, and not really worry about it. That accessibility and then having it kind of like almost hidden. I think in, in most of the photos or images people see, they might not notice where the stand is. Like there is one and, and right. it, you know, it's, it, it's very easy to use. An important question people are probably waiting for me to get to is, is the price, how much will it cost? So you can get the scooter for $1,495. Mm -hmm. That comes with a 30 day money back guarantee mm. oh, and a two year warranty. So you get what you pay for, kind of you buy things right, deal with a company that you can talk to and try and take care of you after after your purchase. And that's kind of the whole ethos of where we're coming from. We're definitely looking for people who who realize that when you, when you buy any scooter, they're gonna pay for themselves. So we've got some questions from our fan base uh, about Tor and uh, can I ask you a few of them? Yeah, definitely, let's awesome. go. Daniel Fuentes asks, uh, what are the approximate folded and unfolded dimensions of the scooter? It's probably not something you know right off hand. So I kind of do, but I'm, Due to like the fact that in England we use a metric system, I'm not sure if my answer is mm. going to do it. Just go on our website, it's there. Tor.com. Um, Tor.com. Tor.com, a, a four character domain name. That's gotta be hard to come by. Yeah, it's a, it's, it was work. Yeah, uh, right. There was a lot going on in the background. The next question comes from somebody who just identifies as NYC and they ask, uh, what upgrades have been made to Tor in 2022? So I guess, you know, how things have evolved over the last 12 months or so. Yeah, I think that that's, that's a great question. It's one that makes me think a lot. There's so much going on in these teams, all the things that are developing in parallel. It's difficult to like firmly park timelines, but our firmware has come on a huge amount. It's come on to the point that not only is it like really stable, uh, we, we did have a huge amount of redesigning to do. I, I don't know how well, you know, NYC was following us, but due to a lot of the chip shortages, we actually had to do a bit of a redesign we have to redo our firmware. Uh, so there's all of these fun things that have happened, but actually where we're at now, and, and this isn't hyperbole, is so much better than where we were in the first place. I don't want to say it was a good thing because it wasn't, mm -hmm. but like when you redo something, if you do something a second or third time ever, you usually find that you learn things the first time. Things that we wanted to do that we realized we could do better. And that happened through our accelerated life cycle testing program. Mm -hmm. So we hired a load of riders, they rode them, they were not 
to our employees. They, you know, use these things like a customer would use them. And then we notice things from those that we, say, oh, we can tweak this and fix that. So a lot of like a, a series of, of minor improvements. I think that's probably the best way to answer that. Yeah. So we talked about what makes, what makes a scooter unique. Uh, what makes Tor the, the company unique? I guess a variety of things. I mean, first of all, is, is being relatively small. You know, a lot of the companies that that people know of in this space are really, they're really sizable. So one of the advantages that you do get is that when you get a small, tight-knit company, the way that they look at problems is different or the way they solve problems is different because they're able to, they're, they have that flexibility in, in thinking. Um, they have the, the really tight communication um, that lets you fix problems that can't be solved by one person or one skill. You get that agility that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think that like as, as an individual company, like. You know, Richard and I you know, started this and, and we both have you know, funny backgrounds, but I would say like his background is particularly interesting in that he's got an automotive background and also an engineer, but run businesses. And, and my background is like, I've spent way too long in micromobility. I have a distinct understanding both as a designer, but also as a user of these vehicles. And that matched up with some of that engineering expertise provided this kind of like dual pronged basis. So we brought in people who have incredible manufacturing experience and, and design experience and also people who are not familiar because that fresh thinking mm -hmm. within a group of people who mm -hmm. have seen it all, you know, mm -hmm. is, is really important. You know, you, you can't innovate if you're kind of along a line of thinking already. Thank you so much for your time today and for being with us today. I am really looking forward to reviewing Tor. I feel like so many times uh, we struggle to find, you know, differentiators or little features during a review to have, you know, show what's different, what's better. This is a case where it's just an abundance. There's gonna be so much to talk about in all of the things that are unique about it. So uh, thanks again so much for your time. And it's just been absolutely great having you here. No, thanks very much. It's, um, it's always nice to talk to someone who's tried so many different things also ridden vehicles that are not just scooters you know, that are because it gives you such a kind of context and um yeah thanks for having us